Welcome to the Black Meadow. Where we're expecting to find a vampire hunter. Not a vampire hunter. A dragon hunter. <laughs> At the Shrine of Galloway, which has been here since the beginning of the game. Haven't had, to, haven't had to come back west for a while. I wonder how dangerous she is. She's one person. Probably should be leveling up some of these characters. Probably. Eh. <laughs> what could go wrong? A woman in gleaming mail stands guard before the shrine, her head bowed in thought or, or prayer. The clasp of her cloak bears the engraving of a dog's head. The amulet writhes in your pack, seeming almost to be alive. You feel a pressing compulsion to do as the dragon asked and place it around the woman's neck. Well met, friend. He looks up as you approach, discarding her solemn appearance for a crooked grin. Greeting, stranger. Don't see too many travelers out this way lately. Shame, really. Who are you? Balanrod. Of the Scorched Blade. Perhaps the only Scorched Blade left these days. Hard to know for sure. Lately I spend more time tending the shrine than hunting drakes. Tell me about the Scorched Blade. Dragon hunters, she smirks, are so we fashioned ourselves. We worked very hard to ensure our prey never reached that stage. We were a ragtag bunch at the beginning. Started with clearing worm infestations, then we began to hunt down the drakes. Members came and went. We earned enough fame ourselves after we helped bring down a full-grown dragon. We were glorious in our way. A glorious mess sometimes, but it didn't last. Some of our members fell in with the hounds, or else the Society of the Talon. I don't much care for looting old temples or rubbing elbows with the high-born pricks convinced they're Galloway's chosen. I'm content to hold up our banner all on my own. What are you doing out here? Having a few words with the father of monsters. It tends to be a one-sided conversation. She smiles a little. I come out here on occasion. I try to keep the shrine clear of branches and the like. Are you here to pay respects? Ask the Seeker God's blessing on a hunt? Is there any good hunting around here? You would think so. I suppose it depends on what you're hunting. Trolls and their kin ha live here in abundance, living off of what bandits stumble into the brush. But most of the deer have moved on, and more impressive beasts have already been slain. You might have better luck to the southeast, the Searing Falls or Elmshore. I've been looking for you. Oh? I didn't think I was much remembered by anyone. How is it that you know me? Idle talk in the pubs. Could I ask you some questions? What? You lost the item, the dragon's amulet. How did I lose it? Valenrod's brows furrow and she nods. Sure, what can I do for you? The amulet suddenly writhes in your pack, seemingly almost to be alive. You press, feel a pressing compulsion to do as the dragon asked and placed it around the woman's neck. Hmm. I've brought you a gift for helping my family with the drake some years back. She turns the Adra gem over in her hands. This is quite the gift. I fear I don't remember the occasion, but I'm glad I could have been of some service. She raises the amulet, lowering it over her head. I hope your family is well, and she pauses frowning as something seems to distract her. Her expression shifts, brows furrowing as she listens. There's a flare of light from the amulet, which pulses like a star. Falunrod's d face darkens, mouth pressed into a thin line as she concentrates. Idiot. 
You, you think to buy an alliance with a monster? I'll not be the coin you do so with. I'll end you here, sycophant, and your dragon as well. She read as her poleaxe and leaps forward towards you with a shout. Yep. Not exactly a moment I'm proud of. And I'm also using her as two birds, one stone as far as my as far as my uh, profits go. Resolve 44. Is that good enough for you, you son of a bitch? I have at least 20 resolve. Yeah. Somehow I think I made it. What the f- What a comically powerful spell, given my previous attempts and things I was like trying to barter with to make this work. It's actually like strangely- it's just like weird that that was there the whole time. Oh, she's got- she's got doubles everywhere. Uh, I hope that doing this is worth it in some way, in my efforts against an ancient evil. Otherwise, this is just a bummer. <laughs> Your next blow sends the Dragon Slayer to her knees. She looks up at you with undisguised loathing, gritting, bloodied teeth. You... You don't know what you're doing. Think what she will do with this freedom. The amulet heaves and twists. A thick miasma seems to pour from the heavy gem, unseen by all but you. It moves towards Falunrod's eyes and face, and you hear her shout of anger as she re recognizes too late the renewed incursion. No! She tries to rise, only to crumple once more to the ground. You will regret... What else she means to say is swallowed up by her strangled cry. Her lips, her limbs jerk, fingers spasming. You have the impression of a weak, frail light rising from her body, only to be scattered by a sudden pulsing glow. You are struck with a fleeting sensation of despair, and then a stronger, heady triumph. For a moment, all is still, then Felonrud's gaze settles upon you once again, her eyes gleam a familiar, fiery gold. She looks down at herself, with cursory interest, and then rises smoothly to, hear, to her feet. I wasn't sure about this at first, but I've got to admit, now that I have a dragon friend, it's harder to feel bad about it. How's it feel? She makes a strangled noise, a growling cough. And then frowning, tries again. It is... Ah. Watcher. You know not the difference. I have felt all these things before, but as through, as through a fog. What small lungs this body has. How quick the beat of its heart. He turns towards you. You have freed me. It is no small thing to have a dragon in your debt. And the dialogue choice is here, like I was hoping it would be. I'm hunting I am hunting a man called Theos. Can you help me? There is a name with many years behind it. Is that your quarry? I know not where he walks, nor can I fight him for you. You would only rob yourself of the answers you seek, and take up Merwald's habits in his place. I have gathered my, to myself a thousand tales in those many years beneath the earth, but I will remember yours most dearly. You will be more than a match for this Theos. It should be quite the spectacle. I am almost sorry to miss it. Two thousand years, and now I am free. I know not where I will go first. The Valian Republics, perhaps? Or the plains of Ratsaurus? I should like to run, I think. Farewell, Watcher. Hey, drink a beverage in every bar in the Eastern Reach? <laughs> uh, 
Hey, I have resolve now. Resolve, dexterity, and constitution. These stats are... These items are super powerful. They give you a bunch of all the basic stats. Drink a beverage in every bar in the Eastern Reach. Huh. How do you even tell? What a weird problem to have. And Zawa is back. Oh my fucking god. I got another 11,000 experience. Total quest experience is 29,000 for this quest. Shit. Yeah. And all I had to do was be a bad person. I thought I was at 70,000. Yeah. No, I think people lied when they were correcting me. I'm pretty sure I was at 70,000, and now I'm at 72,000 out of 78,000. I've said before that I think that experience is split between your party, and people have insisted, no, your experience is not split between your party. But I just gained 11,000 experience, almost 12,000 experience, and I only gained two. And guess what? 12,000 experience divided by six people is two. <laughs> So whoever told me that experience is not split is clearly full of shit. I mean, this quest alone is 30,000 experience, which would be half of the experience that Yaskier has ever had. So it's definitely yeah. split. That's a huge number. Huh. And now we have ourselves a strange goal. I guess we'll get started. <laughs> gotta have a- I gotta drink a beer at every city, at every tavern. How many of them are there? How will I even keep track? I don't know, I'll just go from left to right. We'll just go left to right across the map while I'm, while I'm trying to work on other goals and we'll just try to keep track. There we go. Let's get myself a notepad. While I'm walking. Yeah, let's load. All right. Yeah. Gilded fail. I don't know the full list, so we kind of have to write them as we go. But at least I won't try to drink with uh, beer at the same place again. I wonder if this is... It'd be nice if it had some kind of progress bar. Drink a beverage in every bar. In the Eastern Reach. Alright. What I'm really doing is I'm embracing my her my cultural heritage as a dwarf <laughs> in this moment. There we go. I have consumed mead. Oh yeah, I can switch back to this now. I don't need the three resolve anymore. I should figure out who else to give it to. Disengaging is not as interesting as resolve, but you... You don't have resolve from that. That's one resolve. No, might as well just go give you a giant pile of resolve. She, she has the 20 on one right now, all on her own. Alright. Does it give me any indicator of progress? Wrong item. No. Every bar in the West Eastern Reach. Which I believe is... I believe the Eastern Reach is the entire map, right? Beep! This one's going to take a little while. But I think that's it. Uh, I think this entire side of town... 
Veilwood. Yeah, these are all just forests. That doesn't have a bar. Radric's Hold, I don't think, counts. So we're going back to Cadnua at this point. I'll finish exploring my town. And then we gotta go to Defiance Bay. Where there's at least... At least two, three? Gelade. Well done. Sure. A formidable fortress in the old style. We don't build them like this anymore, you know. Not by the sea. Too vulnerable to cannons. I think there actually are three or more bars. I think there was one in Andra's Gift, one in Brackenbury, and one in Copper Lane. In Defiance Bay. So... That'll take a few. Still, it's kind of amusing. It's a fun little weird surprise quest that came out of nowhere. It's more it's a bit more amusing than some of the other progress bars of just do a lot of fighting, yo. One glass eye and several teeth are missing from the scolder head. How do you do? This grizzled old man takes a puff from his pipe and nods at you. I was wondering when you would drop when you would drop by. Kith around here have been hit with more than their share of trouble of late. I'm up to my ear in bounty offers. Figured at least one of these might interest someone with your skills. What are the most recent bounties? Now I ought to warn you, there's a reason these bounties are still up to offer. These are tough bastards, every one of them. If you're not up to it now, feel free to come back around when you're better prepared. In the meantime, here's a good patch to start off. There's a standing bounty on Sly Seardle's head, of course. Then there's the Forest Lurker. Haunting the trade routes, then this ogre shaman should fetch a good, fetch a good price. And the last one is a uh, war chief Iklak. Tell me about Sly Cyrdal. This bounty comes all the way from New Hamar. Sly Cyrdal's Sly Cyrdal and some of his accomplices have escaped the prison there and killed two Justicars on their way out. The guards are itching after revenge. A man matching his description was seen near Magran's Fork. He's well armed, and he'll have his friends with him too. Forest Lurker? Let's see. Word is this big forest lurker's taken up residence in Black Meadow, just off the main road. The merchants have been calling it the Dweller, and they want it gone before it starts chewing up their caravans. The Ogre? That's one that keeps making the rounds. Nalrin the Wise, some kind of ogre shaman. They say he's raided a half dozen farms all over the Deerwood. Word is he's holed up somewhere in Elmshore, though nobody who went looking has been seen since. And the Warchief. Warchief Iklak. He's a Zalrip. If the name didn't tip you off. He moves around a lot, but he's known for he's known to haunt the Veilwood from time to time. Folks want him dealt with before he takes up a dra takes up with a dragon. Yeah, that'd be, be a problem if a dragon got around, huh? So this is the, this was the, uh, burglary that had a, a weird knot based, based around faith. In Imirgal, Zawa met with the priests of Abaddon to discuss the mystery of who had stolen the Smith's Hall artifacts and for what purpose. During the investigation, a quirky priest of Whale lent the group his bizarre form of help. Answers to the thief's riddles posed as different riddles. After tracking down each stolen artifact through a series of additional clues, Zawa and the priest of Abaddon realized that the priest of Whale was the thief. Oh my god! Very pleased with himself, he had no objection to being captured and sent to the Earl of Ymir for punishment. When Zawa left the priest of Abaddon, they were still trying to determine the point of the theft. He just liked riddles, dude. Big fan. Ow. Oh. It's, it's the knot again. Stalls enemies' beneficial effects for 20 seconds. Oh. We seem to have gained somebody who is annoying. Reducing my prestige. All right, I'll go talk to this guy. Well, we've gained up a few quests. 
Malgren's Fork, Black Meadow, and Valewood are all right next to each other, whereas the other one was a place that I maybe haven't even been to yet. Amazing. You could fit a whole village in here. They have a very limited pool of things to say. Honestly, I'm just happy to have a vacation from always hearing from Durance. Mm, seems healthier than before. It's basically what he sounds like whenever he speaks. <laughs> Have I been here yet? I don't think so. Good day to you. Good tidings, my lord. Might I interest you in anything? I offer supplies for the road, and I'm sure you'll find many things of use to a hardy traveler such as yourself. He sells something that gives you one resolve. <laughs> uh, that appears to be a fine version of literally every weapon and armor type. Which is not especially useful to me, but... Cool, I guess. Right. This place, as beautiful as it can be with the absence of children. Time to get back in the keep. Apparently, I have a visitor, and they're not very nice. Ruining my prestige. By a lot, mind you. They're almost taking away all the prestige I got from going all the way to the bottom of Adnua. My lord, I have an important matter with which requires your attention. Yes, that's why I'm talking to you. Are you only accessible via the menu? I trust all is well. Please let me know if there's anything I... Ah. Uh. Have fun. Here, this is back. He's also probably incredibly low level. Yeah. All right. I'll try to make sense of him. Oh man, he's gonna be so low level. Yeah. He's gonna be so low level. <laughs> uh, oh, he's actually he's got gear though, just not necessarily good gear. I bet Monet has armor or something like that is straight up better than whatever he's got. It's just, it's just your breastplate. Hmm. This is at least the same thing with better stuff, right? Yeah, increased damage reduction when you're under, lo when you're low on health. Stuff like that. at least give you the direct upgrade. He has none of the special items, really. He has one druid item. Oh, and he's got really outdated dual-wielding weapons. The Unforgiven. Ooh. And Measured Restraint. And Woodwiss. Hmm. Damaging one and exceptional. Exceptional is something. Let's get rid of both these. Probably give you these two. As a start. 
Bit of an improvement, I hope. I'm not sure how long he'll be in the party, but... I think he might have a quest or something. I should talk to him. Yeah? Also, should probably revamp the party again. Something like that, I suppose. Will do. Because last I left him off, he was a melee character. Was the kind of goal. Need something? As a peripatetic loner, I'm not privy to the latest news. But the Hollowborn Children is a tale that has reached even my reclusive ears. Or, rather, ear. What do the Glanfoth and Druids think of this plight? It's been a long time since I've spoken with my circle. They'd probably tell you what I'd tell you. This plight was most certainly the consequence of someone trespassing into Ngwithin places, not meant for folk. I mean, what else other than the gods could inflict punishment of such impressive scale? What are your thoughts on the Hollowborn? Any time a life is separated from its soul. I wanted to pretend it was just a rumor when I first heard of it. In my youth, I'd curse the dear woodens for being ignorant to spoilers that breed out of control. But soulless babies? What heartless gods would inflict that kind of tragedy? No parent or child deserves to be a part of that horror. Let's talk of other matters. Need something? I don't- I think I just haven't talked to him, basically. There's so many party members. Uh, maybe I'll find his quest in here. Tell me about yourself. My second favorite subject. He runs his fingers through his scalp, preening his fur. What would you like to know? How did you come to be trained as a druid? Here of his thumbs his half-shredded ear and thinks to himself for several seconds. It wasn't, uh, entirely by choice, not the start at least. My ambition was to be a hunter. I merely arrived by a different trail. As a child, an, Amon, an Adam Fath came to visit. An honored guest is occasion for a grand chase, but I was left out. Instructed instead to be cupbearer for one, for the old wise one while the rest were on hunt. I'm sure you can guess what happens. Wise Adam Fath gives dumb child a shred of attention. We ended up talking until the hunters returned. He gave me... His hands dart across his body, scouring the pockets and folds of his tunic. This. He, pre he presents a rusted iron medallion fashioned in the likeness of a hound's head. A common icon amongst the frontiersmen, explorers, and other seekers faithful to Galloway. Wow. What a time for Galloway to show up twice in an episode. The Adam Foth insisted I'd be trained and none of my village would defy him. Now, he smiles broadly, I don't need a bow to hunt. Where are you from originally? My mother's crotch. You? I meant... <laughs> what a coincidence, I also came from your mother's crotch. For the record, only I'm allowed to insult my mother. But I respect your dedication to banter, so I'll let it slide. This time. I grew up in Air Glonfoth, specifically in and around Thane Bog. My people, the Fisher Crane tribe, are migrant stewards of the land. I've walked the whole of Glonfoth many times. What's the story behind the symbol of Whale on your eyes on your eyes patch? Whale is known as the eyeless face, so this symbol seemed a good fit for my eye patch. He absentmindedly runs his finger along the strap of the patch band. Whale's iconography is rather popular in my home tribe, but it seems he is not as widely venerated here in Deerford. I remember thinking that if I consecrated my eye to he who obfuscates and reveals, then maybe with enough devotion, Whale would make use of the old ruined thing. He pulls on the eye patch strap and lets it go with a loud snap. So if you think you see me staring at rumps and cleavage, it's really just the will of Whale controlling my gaze. Honest. What's your relationship with Galloway? I was raised as a disciple of the Seeker God. He is the champion of the hunt. 
be it the simple struggle for sustenance or the scholarly pursuit of knowledge. In my older years, I found... He cuts himself off, shakes his head, and starts again. Life has shown me I am more suited to the ways of whale. The furious hunt for knowledge often outpaces the journey to real understanding. Druids are known for changing into animals. What sorts of creatures can you become? He takes a half step backwards as you, as you ask the question. All sorts of things, he says quietly, with a long, uncomfortable gaze. Erevis stares at you blankly, arms folded. Let's discuss something else. Hmm. He can only turn to a Stalgar, is what I'm guessing. And that's a thing that's probably not something he's proud of. Any man with your scars has a story to tell. I'm just going to ask you later if you don't tell me now. Yes, yes, I suppose you should know. I struggled with spirit shifting, the final rite of passage in my druidic training. I prayed to Galloway for insight and, in the style of seekers of old, went to the forest, alone, to ask for guidance. Then I got my answer, an answer at least, in the form of a vibrantly colored Stelgar that pounced from the underbrush and made a salient demonstration of its capacity to eat things one-fifteenth its size. As awful as that sounds, it's one amazing rite of passage. Well, go f- Oh, you actually meant that. Thanks. My kin didn't find anything positive about this tale. As the beast was lopping off bits of my handsomeness, I remember trying to fight back, swinging with arms too short to reach. I felt I had the energy for one last swipe at the beast's nose, and when I lashed out with a punch, my arm felt twice as massive, and my fingers sprouted talons! In a rush of power, I shifted into a mirror of my assailant. Apparently, he couldn't pick on someone his own size. By the battle's end, his severed arm was in my maw. The beast limped away in defeat. That's quite an impressive tale. I thought learning to spirit shift would win me some respect. Maybe trap myself in a deer and lass with a lust for little men. Alas, I might have been better off staying a novice. When I wandered, wandered back to my village, they saw my wounds and asked what happened. I showed them. The name they called my form was the Autumn Stalgar, and his mouth opens, but he hesitates for a long moment before choosing his words. They were not impressed. The Riau of my circle believed the Autumn Stalgar to be a heinous abomination. It is said that if it eats you, your soul is invariably lost. As if this was my first and most... As this was my first and most intuitive form, they deemed me a carrier of its evil. Even though I never so much as threatened my kin, I was ruled unfit and cast out. Here of a size, scratching his scarred face. I don't know what message Galloway was trying to send. The only lesson I learned was that the Seeker God will punish you for seeking. Damn. You didn't choose your spirit-shifting form? No, he says with a huff. It chose me, or so I imagine. I always assumed it w I would shift into a stoat. Maybe something that seems more true to my nature. He points to the embossed pattern of whale on his eye patch. As the obscured teaches, when the answer is inscrutable, one must be content to ponder the question. So you're some sort of cannibal? Irvis stares at you with a frown before covering his face in his hands. No, he mutters. At least I think not. I've never actually sat down and eaten an entire person to find out. I'm not that curious to find out. Were you at least recognized as a proper druid? His brow furrows. No. But I know I passed an initiation rite five times more perilous than any of those kin betrayers that insisted I was a failure. Can you learn to shapeshift into something less terrifying? Already can and sometimes do, he says with a beaming smile that quickly returns to a scowl. But the druids of my circle assign great meaning to one's first form. 
I'll always be unclean to them. Thank you for sharing your story. Well, if you don't know me, you can't trust me. And if you can't trust me, odds are low you'll leap in front of a flying arrow to save my life. I've been meaning to visit the druids of Twin Elms to see if they know more about my spirit shift. If our journey takes us there, perhaps they can enlighten me with more information about the Autumn Stelgar. But for now, maybe we can talk about something less depressing? On second thought, some other time. You're a loss. Huh? We'll, we'll, we'll follow up on his on the other religion-y things later. But that's a good intro. There we go. I just straight up didn't get his intro. Admittedly, for other characters, their quest tends to be thrown in your face because it's one of the conditions of them being around. Not always, though. No, not all. I guess I can't say tend because that would involve the, some kind of majority, and I'm not sure if that's the case. Sagani and Pelagina and some other characters, like their, their quest kind of gets right up in your face and kind of happens on its own. But... Adair and Aloth, I think you have to look for it. Well, there we go. Now I have an entire party of characters who all need to have a quest to be worked on. And I just need to figure out where the hell those locations are. Which is one of the reasons why I want to just go exploring. Because there's all, a lot of this area is empty. And I think I can just fill it in as I go. Because I need to find the cliff. There's some cliff that Sagani wants to get to. There's a battlefield that Adair wants to get through. He, she, he wants to go to Elm's Reach, which... Sure. For all I know, I could just go there. It's grayed out, but that's probably just because I haven't gone to the stuff in between to reach there. Like, we just have some exploring to do. Go out into the world. And so, the, huh. I've gone to the bottom of the of the entire freaking uh, you must get world it. at this point. Now let's go across the breadth of it. And then whenever, then when we go forward with the main story, whenever they're like, oh yeah, this place happens there, I'll be like, I know that place. Which is kind of what's happening now, because, in fact, yeah, all the quests that I got for the main story in this chapter were to go, it was either to, to go to all the places I've already visited around, around, uh, Defiance Bay. Like the uh, like the undead quarter and stuff like that, or or it was for me to go to uh, Deerford Village, which I've also done the quests for already. Let's go all the way to the farthest one. We'll work our way back from there. I forgot to send an escort. To no. Yes. No. Maybe. I can't remember. Uh, stronghold. Who's the escort? Supplicant. Aloth was the escort. Gotcha. Oops, I forgot to assign a new building. Still, we're about to be done. Then I can just stop thinking about this, basically, until something happens again. We haven't been here for a long time. Is it the Zaurup camp? This is where the bear was at the beginning of the game. Alright, so which of our bounties is, is in the Vale of Wood? War Chief Iklak. Yep, that makes it pretty straightforward. It's gonna be the Zaurups. Uh, before I go in, I should level somebody. Hey, buddy. Lowest level character in the party. We really need to do something about that. Let's give you some survival points. Bonus spells. Two weapon style, dual wield attack speed. Yep. Rival six. He specializes in that in stealth of all things. I'll, I'll get I'll get survival seven. Then I'll start putting points into into uh, uh, athletics so that he can have a self heal. Spellmaster. Oh, he get he gets this too, where he gets a free spell. Cool. Oh man, I, but I have to reacquaint myself with all these. 10 second charm AoE against beasts. Hmm. Ooh, I do always like myself a uh, I always do like myself a chain lightning. It's just so weak now. 
It's also, oh, that, that was just an area of effect, too. Make enemies lose their deflection and reflex. An AoE of healing. And bonus max endurance. Sunbeam. Blinding for 20 seconds, doing AoE burn damage. Helen's Reach, Tangle Foot, some hobbling. Vile Thorns. And Winter Wind. I think Nature's Vigor makes sense. Increased max endurance and a heal. It's a very slow heal, taking 15 seconds. But plopping that down during a fight just adds to the many, many heal over time effects that are happening to everybody in the party. I have a lot of those. A lot of people have a passive self heal and a lot of other things are going on. There, now you get the 2 DR. The self-heal over time makes some sense as a melee character. I don't even... Is he using a morning star? He's using a flail. Yeah. The problem with dual wielding is that it's hard to have a weapon focus that makes a lot of sense. I think I'd go for savage attack with him. He is a monster after all. Hey, a new spell. Now level two. Six DR for all allies. Taste of the hunt. Melee only. Caster's melee weapon becomes an ideal instrument of the uh, for hunting, adding continuous raw damage to its attack and restoring endurance to the caster every hit. One hundred percent of damage is restored as endurance, and then damage is done over time. That seems like a good thing for a melee character that might have some trouble staying alive otherwise. Firebrand. I think Taste of the Hunt's a pretty obvious one, because I've already I'm already kind of focusing on shapeshifting with this guy. And he's a melee character. So this being something he can cast every single fight seems like a no-brainer to me. Hey, he's all caught up now. That's a start. Uh Palagina should be a quick person to level up too. Need something? Oopsie. Nah. There we go. Savage attack. I'm ready. That's a lot of points to do athletics. Hey, survival 7. There we go. What happens when I invest, invest so heavily into athletics? What do you got? Intense flames. Just flames of devotion is, is stronger twice per encounter. Is it time for me to get that finally? Or superior deflection? Or weapon focus. I'm clearly focused on this weapon. But do I want 6 accuracy or 25% bonus damage as burn? Eh, intense flames. 
it's nice to finish off the class's core skills. Mm -hmm. Make them all cool and all that. Alright, now back to fighting Zaurps. Mm. Hi! How do you all do? Dead, I hope. Uh, we, we don't have my flame enchantments anymore my other character had before. Kind of a bummer. Taste of the hunt. Hmm. I may have misinterpreted this a little bit. It says the caster's melee weapon becomes an ideal instrument for hunting. But I only just now realize it doesn't have a duration. It's not a modal thing. It doesn't- I don't think it does transform your weapon. Normally that kind of thing would mean that it transforms your weapon. But I don't- I don't think it does. So it's kind of a misleading description because there's a lot of uh, spells that tr that replace your weapon with something else. As far as I can tell, it's just an attack. So 32 to 50 slash damage, and then it heals by that much, and then it also does some raw damage over time. And that, but it's a, but it's a one-off. Because I noticed that when I click on it, it's like, "Yo, who do you want to hit?" And I'm like, "What do you mean? What who do I want to hit?" It's, I'm, I want to transform into my ideal weapon for hunting. Look at those attack damages, but, but values, by the way, 32 to 50. Damn. Anyway, let's get it, hit him in the face with it for fun. How'd that go? Taste of the hunt, 35 slash damage. Plus more over time. That'll keep him healthy, I suppose. What a bummer. Cat flurry attack, 33% increased attack speed. Once per rest. It's only 11 seconds long. That shouldn't be per rest. Oh, uh, do I have to reprogram everybody's AI? No? Maybe I accidentally didn't tell them the right thing. Ready, watcher. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like a spell like that should not be once per rest. You should be able to increase your attack speed every single fight. Just like how you spell turn into a cat every fight. Yeah. Because it's such a short buff to only be able to use once per rest. Did somebody just level up again? Grieving Mother has enough experience to level up. Oh, you were, that was already true though. Maybe she just hit the next milestone? The struts and supports are large enough to be the ribs and vertebrae of a dragon. Huh. As we learn more about the Zaurups, that's starting to make a bit more sense. Because as an entire race, they seem to have a tendency towards worshipping dragons and being their servants and so on. So the idea- so it's interesting to, f to hear that they may be intentionally making their homes look like dragons. Like it runs that deep, apparently. Kind of interesting, at least. Admeth's Wirt. Alright, so somebody else was in Magran's Fork. Sly Sirtle. Somebody escaped from prison. We can't have that happening, can we? Is that gonna- wait. Is this the fateful location? That killed my- that felt like it was killing my playthrough last time? I think it might be. <laughs> uh, I think this is it. Is- I said before that once upon a time I tried to do a playthrough of this game and I accidentally entered like Act 2 or 3 or whatever. I made some kind of story progress and the whole world got harder and I was getting crushed by these impossible fights and I was just like, I can't handle this game right now because it was my first CRPG and it was just becoming too much at that point. I think it was this encounter. 
I think this was the encounter where I slowly tried to fight him for like an hour and I'm like, I don't know, I can't handle this game, it's too much. Or maybe this is somebody else. This is Graham Frill the Wayfarer. This may prove useful. Somebody else entirely, it would appear. Hmm. Sagani's the most underleveled. I need to fix that. Oh, that's a lot of them. Heal companion for some endurance. Or revive them entirely. Or vicious aim. Slower, but with more accuracy and more damage. No, she doesn't have... I thought she already had a modal thing. I wanted to make sure that she didn't already have one. That would have to be, like, overwritten. Swift aim. Ah. Increased attack speed. Ooh, reload speed. That's a big change. That's probably worth the accuracy loss, honestly. Because reloading takes so long with a weapon like this. Yeah, that's too big of a deal. She has so many talents. Swift and steady. Ooh. What? The only downside of of swift aim is that you lose seven accuracy, and this gives her five more. Immediately undoing the negative. She only loses two accuracy. That's huge. Defensive bond. So they just both are less likely to be hit by AoEs. Marked Prey. Hmm. Avoid incoming big attacks. Master's Call. Just brings them right back to you, your companion. Stunning shots. Passive. So if she's fighting the person that's fighting her companion, she can stun them. Which stacks well with the, with the rogue if they're in the party together. I mean, that's that's a really strong passive. On a character that's mostly seems to be about strong passive so far. I figured she's the ranger. Let's go all in on survival. Should probably have marksman by now. Uh, or the one for your weapon. Your weapon being an arbalist, I believe. Yeah. Still, these are good bonuses for your companion. I feel like we should probably have Arbalist by now. If we're gonna specialize in this weapon. There we go. One more character leveled. We'll slowly get there with everyone. Do I want to deal with this right now? Not right now. Just give me a minute. Oh wait, but I... Did I already level her? Whatever. Let's talk to this guy. A motley gathering stands at the crossroads. At first glance, the person at the head of the group seems more a monster than man. The two large and curling horns emerge from the sides of his skull, forming a hardened carapace that is pocked like coral. Down its center, this strange shell splits, revealing the ash-gray skin of a man's face, obscured above the nose. The horns seem a mere helmet, save that in several places you cannot tell where the flesh, the flesh ends and the bone begins. 
From the neck down, however, this is all this is by all appearances a human man, clad in fine armor of the same dark shade as his features. The man smiles, revealing long white teeth from which the gums have retracted. Despite his masked eyes, he looks unerringly in your direction. Hail, traveler, and well met. He turns to Palagina, smiling all the wider. Hey now, pretty lady. Had I your patron, I, I'd be a dark bird still, but all the more handsome for it. Patron, that's one way of putting it. Delusional, but we all deal with it in our own way. He laughs quietly. Are you enjoying the fresh air? We, he gestures to the men and women behind him, are doing much the same. Who are you? I'm Grammarfell, lately of a deer in soil, and these, he sweeps a hand to gesture to his comrades, my merry associates. Stop smiling, Frisco, you'll frighten them. What are you doing out here? To see what Wadwin has wrought, he snorts, or find the name of the true architect, Thousands of souls flung out into the world, but only in the deer wood, in a deer, mothers and fathers coo undeterred over their sprats, and just across the sea they weep. It's worthy of a song. I walked a time in Rawatai, in the time of the lovers' tides, and saw the chaos they brought, but this, this is a true cataclysm, a time of destruction I would observe firsthand, though storms and plagues pale in comparison. Have you made any progress? What, towards a cure? He chuckles. I seek no resolution, only an understanding, and in that, yes, I think I have the way of it. You need but look at them, the squirming, empty things, the babes thrown into the sea, or else exposed in the wilderness. Grammarfell laughs. All these experiments the Animancers have done, I have found my answers already, even if the grieving mothers and fathers have not. What did you learn? That having parted body from soul, we see the truth of it, that the brain is not the mind, but only that which houses it at time. That what sustains the flesh is wholly separate from what feeds a life. If a soul is what determines life, then death is not the blade through the heart or the poison in the drink. It is the fragmentation of the soul, the destruction of a soul, indeed, the absence of it. These hollow-born are the closest thing to true death we shall ever come upon. I only wonder if it is the culmination of Barath's work or an escape from it. But what are you doing on the road? A band of brigands such as we? I cannot imagine. Grammarfell chuckles. It is not an, ex an inexpensive life, ours. Even in the study of calamities, one deserves a certain level of comfort, I think. I think our talk is done. Kill that one slow. I want to see the light leave him. Yep, <laughs> really turns around really quickly. I love studying the suffering that's happening here. But I'm really here for the suffering itself, not the... Not because I seek any sort of resolution or solution or anything like that. Anyway, I don't think that they have the best chances here. So much for the AoE I was hoping for, but still. Oh, he just exploded. That really gets rid of- that really wastes that cast. Ah, uh, that's cathartic. They're dead. As he prepared to strike a final blow, Grammarfell raises a hand. Wait! Wait, you have won the day! Mercy, Traveler, I beg you. Uh, meanwhile, his companions have exploded. Fine, you'll spend some time in the dungeons at Kadnua. As you wish it, then.
Well, that was cathartic to just fucking flatten them because I fought them as like a level whatever I am, level 12 instead of like level 2 or whatever. Four, maybe. Load game. Peril. Different character. Eighteen hours played eventually. The different cast of characters. You can see Kana's there and Grieving Mother is there, so I got at least to Deerford Village. Magran's Fork. Oh my god. Let's do a- let's have a little trans-dimensional moment here for a second here. I didn't even make a manual save. My last manual save as this character was two hours earlier, but there is a quick save. But still some time had passed here. Hmm. This is when my main character was a ranger. A class that I don't like as much as chanters. Chanters are really cool. Rangers can be cool in certain games. The steward of Kadnu has received a letter for you. Ah, that's them explaining that there's a DLC. Oh yeah, he had more of a... an elf voice, because he was an elf. I guess Kana was also a melee character. Look how many ranged characters I went with in this party, too. That's my character used to look, sound like. Hey. Yeah? Hey. Eh? Eh? Oh my god. Yep. Yep. He's level four. Huh? Weird little- this is a weird little cameo of the fucking dead playthrough from like four years ago or whatever. And there they were! Yep, I knew I fucking remembered you, you son of a bitch. And I have the perception to be like, you seem well, well armed for scholars. Uh, but we are not Scriveners or aspiring priests, but rather scholars of death. Where better to witness it than the road? These paths are not very safe. For instance, I have heard tell that there are certain groups comprised of individuals both skilled and handsome who, depending upon the monetary fortunes of strangers, will unseam those poor devils from nose to nave and thereby send them into the next life. I think our talk is done. Kill that one slow. I want to see the life le leave him. Yep. Grieving Mother has 15 focus. Uh, let's just watch them all die. They're all set to defend self. Even that part was different. At least target acquire, you know? And what's my chant as Kana? Just the three starting spells. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll do fine. That f that first attack instantly took out Edair's first little diamond. What a, what a great sign. Meanwhile, this is probably... Oh shit. He has a fine crossbow and a fine dagger. Why'd she go in and why did he, why'd she even go into melee range? That was a little weird. Yeah, this is probably not gonna work out. Edder's already going down. Look how not durable he is. Like fundamentally different. Cause a down to enemy to explode. That's something different. Yeah. I'm really not trying that hard. I should be casting a bunch of stuff as Aeloth. It's just amusing. Like, this is... I encountered the same fight. Like, this is... This is a fight I encountered. Ugh, what a nightmare. Anyway... Oh, I'm like, what's going on here? No, nothing looks right to me. 
112 hours. I don't know if that's counting correctly or not. How did you get that conclusion? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure where I got 100, 112. Uh, maybe I've let the game run while it paused for some chunk of time and it counted the time the whole time there. My Xbox 360 copy of Mass Effect 3 thought that I played Mass Effect 3 for 90 hours, which was not correct. <laughs> That'd be, you'd be very hard pressed to play Mass Effect 3 for that long. But a lot of games just keep ticking up forever. Well, that went well. Now that we're level 12. What a different world. Anyway, yeah, so that... I'm, I was surprised I, I remembered him so clearly, but the moment we got here, I was like, oh, that fucker. <laughs> That's the fucker that killed the last playthrough, basically. We were in Magrin's Fork, but not for him, right? We're looking for Sly Sidril. I would guess they're probably hiding out by this building over here. They are not. The Adra Formation? What is that? A Delumgan. Ooh, and some bears. Ooh, God, he instantly died. Everyone's still everyone the AI was still running towards him even though his corpse was already down, huh? Alright. Yeah. Outlaw Ranger. There we are. There's the dude. Oh, yeah, there they are. Yep, that's them. <laughs> Not enough focus, huh? Yeah. I guess so. Still, we can have- we can try to make you turn on all of your friends. Hey, it worked! Isn't that fun? We got their leader to kill all their people. Everyone, get him. <laughs> Drake's Bell. Hmm. Already enchanted for anti-beast. Got some DR bypass. Two-handed S-stock. Everyone who would use a two-handed weapon is probably not going to use that one. But probably not. But hey. Huh? Getting some riches and we're cleaning up the world a little bit. Even if it might all be to try to wash away the stain of my dragon-related behaviors. I've been a naughty boy.